Hey everybody, this is Carlos Azalor, and welcome to the G2 podcast. Today, actually, before I get started with who we have today, I hope that the fucking spot is, is gone. Because I was looking, I was looking at this countdown thing, and I was about to lose my fucking eyeballs. Like, how could I not realize that that spot was there all the time? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed me doing random shit. Believe me, it was miserable to record. As miserable as it probably looked like from the outside. Not a single, you know, smile came out of my face while I was watching it. I hope you felt the same way. So this fucking content team stops making me do shit like this. Anyway, today we have with us the absolute legend. This guy, you know, this guy has gone places, man. His name is Hector, and his last name is Rodriguez, just like mine. So here you can see you can see some common, you know, some common denominators here, you know. Hector Rodriguez, nickname Hex. Everybody knows him. He founded Optic Gaming, which is by far the largest US uh, esports brand. Uh, incredibly successful, very well known from their Call of Duty days. And today, Hector's going to be with us. How's it going, Hector? Everything is going fine, man. Thank you for the invite. Appreciate yeah. it. You know, yes, I, I, you I would watch. Coming. I would watch to see who you invited, and and then I would say to myself, wait, wait, why not me, right? Yeah. And then you know, finally you hit me up, so I'm I'm glad that you finally did. But no, truly, thank you for the uh, for the invitation, man. Nah, thanks to you for appearing, man. And and you know, it's 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 actually crazy because when it comes down to esports, uh, we have a long story, but when it comes down to reaching people, you, I mean, you have done what literally no one in esports has been able to do yet which is, uh, you know, really mix that esports and the broader gaming community. Um, and that's something that I, to be honest, look up to and, and, and I, I really try to learn from, uh, from you. So congratulations on that. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's, it's been fun. I'll tell you that much. Can't imagine. Well, we'll get into, into a little bit of that. Uh, I, I, I know you don't have all the time of the world, so I appreciate even more that, you, that you're here with us. Um, with, with all of that said, today we're going to speak probably about, you know, Optic Gaming, of course. We're going to speak about some League of Legends, about some CSGO, some Overwatch League even, um, and uh, about yourself as well, which people have a lot of questions and, and people want to know more about you. Um, so w why don't we actually start uh, from the beginning, which is something wise to do. Um, what got you into esports? Like what got you into playing competitively and, and how did your career kind of develop from there? Uh, what, what got me into competitive is my competitive personality. Uh, I've, I've been competitive in every single aspect of of my life, like everything, everything about it. Uh, but what got me into competitive you know, esports e e or video games was uh, Call of Duty. Uh, very, very early, like in 2006 is when I first had, you know, bought Xbox 360 and it came along with a game called Call of Duty 2 as you guys will see there. And I have that frame reminder right there because it literally changed my life for the, the better. Um, uh, and, and that's that's what it did. I, I was I, I just like beating people. I just like being better than them. And I fell in love with the sniper rifle. Uh, and and with that just gave me this added uh, disadvantage uh, that, that it just made me work harder and harder in doing this. And when I first started, I didn't know what it was. I just knew that it was people playing against people the same way that I would go to a pickup uh, basketball game at the rec center or in the, at the park. And, and the, I just play against people. Um, but, yeah, that's that's what got me into it. My, my competitive nature got me into competitive gaming who would have thought well no that, that that definitely rings a bell i see a lot of uh, similarities here um but what got you into competitors as well really well, what, what got you into into competitive well i know it's the same story i i um you know i was playing football soccer right yeah uh, but when i was uh, much younger i played in different teams uh, i played for atletico madrid actually and um and i also played paddle which is like tennis but with walls it's very known in spain and south america um, and, um, yeah, I was, I was always really competitive. So when I cut, when I got a really fast, easy way to compete with other people through just online gaming, video game, uh, I was like, you know, this is, this, this has to be my thing. Uh, but, but we, you know, we, we, with that said, that competitiveness, um, in and by itself doesn't build what you built, 
um, mm. you see a lot of a lot of uh, very successful um, players. Uh, the the vast majority. I mean, first of all, to become a professional player, it's literally like impossible. Like not even a zero point one percent chance. Even yeah. you take it really seriously, it's really that crazy. Yeah. And then within those professional players, it is just almost as hard to find examples of players that have succeeded after that. So it's like it gets double the hard, right? So yeah. how did you manage to build the empire that, that you've built um, uh, well, you know, despite starting as a player? Yeah, you know what? So so to clear it up, I never really went pro in Call of Duty ever. And it's it's one of uh it's just I, I didn't I don't have that that natural God given talent to be at the top, you know, point zero 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 one percent as as uh, as as you have competed in and the rest of my players have competed in. Uh but I knew very early on that I wasn't going to let my disadvantage or my you know my self limitations to to stop me from working in a field that i wanted to work with uh and and even esports as a whole wasn't what i set out to to compete in or, or to play and i was just very competitive and i liked you know the, the competition aspect of it but i you know when when i quit my job so many years ago i wanted to come i wanted to create you know i've, I've always been an artist and and uh this this i, I went from being a graffiti i don't know if you know that but i was a graffiti artist um oh i know like yeah. the the majority of my life, I've I like like a, like a true legitimate graffiti artist. Shit, so, you have to show us some some stuff. Absolutely, you can you can Google it, uh, but I didn't do what you find on Google. But, uh, Production, can, can you Google that and <laughs> and, and, and put this somewhere? I, I, yeah, I, I so, want to show in the stream some of those. Yeah, so you, you know, obviously graffiti is not an acceptable means of uh, of art. Uh, so by the time that I got to adulthood, I I had to give it up. Uh, but my creativity was always there, and creating videos online, montages, and you know, having a creative outlet was what you know made me become a YouTuber. And when I set out to be a YouTuber, I wanted to entertain people, I wanted to make people laugh, I wanted to make people enjoy their time watching what I was doing. Uh, but in, in Call of Duty, I, I noticed that there was this like there's sort of unfairness going on with the players and me having worked in corporate America for as long as I had, I felt that I had at least a, a small business mindset enough of it so I can help these players not get, you know, taken advantage of by, by sponsors or, or, or that, that sort of nature. So I, I grabbed the ball and I ran with it and I ran with it as far as I could. And, and, you know, you fast forward nine, nine to 10 years and I am here, not where I set out to be. <laughs> uh, we're actually getting back to what, what I set out to be, which was a YouTuber and content creator. Cause that's what makes me happy at the end of the day. Um, the way that I built the, what you call it an empire was truly just by, uh, but by picking the right thing to do at every at every corner, but then imagining uh, and being creative as to how we approach the space that's already there. If you if you jump into the space where everybody's doing the exact same thing, you're not going to get 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 far because everybody's doing the same thing. So for you to differ, differentiate yourself from from everybody else is just going to be that that much tougher. So uh, very early on, I. Uh, I, I noticed that there was MLG tournaments for Call of Duty. At the time, I was I was uh, I was making sniping videos, and I had a I had a fan base uh, on YouTube. And then I had a friend whose name is Hutch, who's still my friend to this day, and and, and uh, two more buddies, Tabe and Cnanners. Now these were YouTubers, and I said, you know, these these guys play Call of Duty. If I grab, if I can convince these three guys to come to an MLG event with me. We are going to have an audience because we're already coming with an audience, right? We we already have you know daily content being you know produced where we have an audience. So I figured we're going to sell the most T-shirts out of any any other team there. No team there is going to sell more T-shirts than me, uh, C Nanners, Tave, and that. I never brought it up to them, um, but that was sort of my thought. And and very early on, I decided to that we were going to build an audience first before we built the championship team. So I would say, all right, whatever team we pick up, that's the team that we're going to concentrate on building youtubers out of these professional gamers are going to be youtubers um and then from there we're gonna you know we're gonna attend events and have the biggest audience and that's going to give us the the leg up because if we're not the best we're going to be underdogs and there's nothing more beautiful than an underdog story but when an underdog has like this this you know bigger audience than every other team there is just a recipe and like almost a perfect storm for it to like become something bigger that's so very true and and you know looking at, at today's um you know, best examples of uh, teams and organizations that took off. You always have the underdog story, right? And 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 kind of the fans rallying behind them. And in, in a way, it's also being at the right place at the right time. The thing is that if you're there all the time, then you will at some point be at the right place at the right time, right? 
and and so congratulations on that on on, on that part when it comes on to optic and what differentiates you today from the rest um you know apart from the fact that uh, undeniably optic has uh, the largest uh, fan base in esports mm -hmm. or in gaming you can say right uh, apart from thank you very much uh, they, they brought me a coke I, I i asked for it on slack they're the best uh, <laughs> um what do you think kind of differentiates you guys from the rest um uh today uh, I just think that it's the first mover advantage uh, in terms of content creation. We, when we set out, I mean, we have years and years of, uh, you know, of backlogged content, and we have an experience in content creation that has just allowed us to, to, you know, to to grow an audience much, much uh, faster than somebody else. Because, you know, what 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 content is to me is more than more than anything, and it's the same thing with graffiti, right? Like when when I when I would paint a train in Chicago, and then somebody would take a picture of it in you know, Kansas City or, 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 you know, farther away, what, what I would, what I would notice is that, that we're connecting somehow. And, and to me, content creation and the internet has always been like this magical place for me because I would, in, in no other time period up until now, I mean, obviously was when the internet was invented, but no other time period would I be able to be speak, you know, would I be able to not only speak to, but look at, you know, some Spanish guy in Germany, you know, with, without the internet and, and, and what, what, what allowed us to do that, what allowed me to do is to to really identify you know the the magic that is the internet and, and the connection that we have uh with with everyone like it allows us to connect and and when there's people playing video games that's sort of you know the, the sort of common denominator as you were saying earlier kind of just grab makes us gravitate all towards this like one you know scene essentially or this one um it's one community. So that's uh that that's that's always been like my thing, like the connection that we have with friends we've never met. Uh, you know, people people in my when, when I stream and I don't stream often, but I, I I've met some of my mods in person and it's like no there's no there's no that's yeah, there's no barrier, right? Like it's like you know these people, you guys just never met. And everybody that's a that's a fan of you, right? Uh and everybody that's a fan of me, when you meet them, they have this sort of like relationship that 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 never has had a physical handshake too, and when you when you make that connection, uh, you know, physical with either a, a fist bump or a or a handshake, that just solidifies that connection and it takes it from you know an imagine imaginative like relationship to a to, to a physical relationship. And I'm talking about friendship. Don't 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 get it twisted. Um, but yeah, man, that's that's uh, that to me has it always will, been like a beautiful thing. They will get it fucking twisted. That's what Twitch said this, okay? You should you should know that best. They will get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's that's great man um look when 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 looking at optic is you know again you, you guys have done a great job uh, in terms of content but you also had a lot of competitive success what were yes. kind of the defining moments you think that you know competitively speaking that kind of you know helped you um uh, you know have this you know peak uh, peaks uh, in terms of volume of people that know about you and things like that. Which one were the tournaments that you remember, or the moments that kind of marked that that uh, legacy? I mean, I can I can tell you every single one, man. I, I, to me, uh, the 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 main one that always and will always stand stand you know stand out as as the one is when we won the uh, the million the first ever million dollar tournament uh, for for Call of Duty, and a lot of people dismiss it um as as not a not a real tournament and that's fine because i know that those same people would consider it you know a valid tournament if they would have been the ones to win it um but yeah that's the that's the one exactly because every single comment every single tournament except if it's a major or some shit yeah yeah <laughs> it's, no, it's like it's 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 only okay if you're the one doing it it's, it's, it's pretty much what i found out on the internet um and yeah that that one's the one that, that really defined us because you know we did it with people that 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 have been on the team we didn't uh if anything we did it with less people that were on the team we had to pick there's this pickup team um you know, Nate Shaw was just coming up as a as, as a personality, and he was gaining like massive, massive traction. And then he 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 ended up, you know, him and Big Time Merc and uh, and Vengeance ended up uh, winning, uh, you know, this million dollar tournament. And then when they asked, you know, Nate Shaw, uh, you know, how does this change your life? And and he he on stage grabs the microphone and says, "I don't have to work at McDonald's anymore." <laughs> it, that 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 single defining moment, man. If you think about it, like connected him to millions of kids out there that True. work, not necessarily McDonald's, but at Burger King, at Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube's like a yes, oil so trailer. reliable. Yeah, so it, it just that that connection. And when I saw that happen, I was just like, I'm like, I was mind blown. I'm like, I'm like this. 
this is something special and this is something that was meant to be because you know throughout optics career i think that there's like higher forces working in uh in our favor because you know we we didn't really win any any big tournaments and then we won the million dollar tournament and then if you fast forward to to uh to x games gold medals that entire year we didn't win a single tournament uh we won the first one but they didn't count uh but when we won the x games gold medal it was like we hadn't won anything and everything that happened up until that point just like exploded even further and even further uh for counter-strike the e-league tournament right we we had this 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 group That's of uh yeah it was, it was a group of like rejects essentially right and and i didn't care because i i i liked counter-strike right i like i like i like snd snd is my favorite game type of all time uh social destroy for for you counter-strike uh buffs but <laughs> I uh I I truly truly am very proud of that one because when when we first stepped in they're like oh my god I can't believe Optic with you know, with with all the money in the world not true with all the money in the world getting you know into they could have picked up a good team why they go with this one why they go with with with, with this group of, of rejects and and I didn't care because I liked the people that I was about to work with uh you know Rush uh and and the rest of the boys were like i don't know i just i just had this like instant connection to them where i knew that i was going to do and try my best to give them something to give them my all in terms of like uh what what we can do as, as an organization and 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 you know just uh not necessarily exposure but just like the resources and and although we didn't do the best at the time we we won uh e-league season two with the team that we weren't supposed to win and that to me was like one of those you were playing amazing beautiful I remember that tournament you were playing really really well uh, you, you I was, was watching really well from the stands, but I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, I mean you, you, you did play fucking great. Like, all, all the pros were saying, you know, this came out of nowhere. Like the team just clicked, you know. Um, and that's that's the beauty of esports, right? Like any given Sunday, just like any other sport. Yeah, absolutely. How how involved are you in the day to day? Um, I guess. I mean, operations now? is such a such a such a big word. Um, but let's just say throughout the last, you know, 12 months on average, how, how much have you been, uh, you know, involved in the operations, either of the company or yeah. within the teams? Okay. Well, I'll say that up until six months ago, I was the, I was, I was involved, very heavily involved. Uh, as of six months ago, there's a, there's a, there's an amazing team, uh, that that's, that's internally working to get that. Uh, and I've taken a little a little time off finally to to do my own thing so uh lately not not that not not that involved and, and beforehand um how uh, beforehand you, i those, those you would have to look at your day like where are you spending it uh, in uh, the- look it you know up until six months ago even let's, let's say up until the beginning of 2017 it was a one-man army with help <laughs> from the people there like if it was if it was sponsorship sales and meetings it was just me and and and, and our agents if it was uh, content deliverables it was me and hitch so it was like I was I was doing uh, I was doing all of it. If I had to take somebody to the dentist, I was gonna take some. There was no team managers. There was there was there was no none of that. It was just me. If so, if the house needed cleaning, I would have to call the uh, the the mates to come and clean. So I was not about to pick that up myself. But uh, I was I was a one man army. I handled you know the accounting. The I mean name Easy. it everything that goes into like Optic was ran at at bare bones for close to. <sighs> Up until 2000, up until January 2017. That's impressive. It, it it is, but it isn't. You know, people say it's like, how did you do it? I'm like, I I I time managed well. I uh, I, I focused on the things that were important at the time, and then itemized what what came next immediately after that. And then the rest was just like life. You know, uh, somebody needs to go to the dentist. I would take him to the dentist. Somebody broke a leg or something. I would have to be the one that. Oh, when when Scumpy dislocated his shoulder, writing a booster. Like I like the whole thing. PR, like you name it. And it and it wasn't there was a nightmare because I, there was nothing that I loved more than doing that because the alternative for me having worked in corporate america was working in corporate america yeah, sure. so so knowing that there's nothing in this world that i wouldn't do that that uh that would require me like if it means me working for myself i i'll clean toilets if i have to that's that's a good statement i mean if you would have to um i mean i guess right now you're a, you're in an off period uh well deserved Thank you. Time. I agree. With, with the family, I guess, and just uh, I, I saw a vlog of yours. You were literally fishing, and I was like, "This motherfucker's fishing outside." I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally, uh, I'm cleaning my mailbox, which is on fire at the moment. Yeah, that's a good thing, though, man. 
I mean, no, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'd pay anything to be in that position that you are, you know, uh, you know, but, but when I, when I go, you know, when, when I move forward, let's say three to six months, mm -hmm. um, we know ourselves, we, we know our nature and it is very likely that three to six months from now, you're like, what am I doing, man? Like, I, I, I gotta do something. I gotta get involved. Yeah. In the, I, I gotta do something. Right. Well, and, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly doing stuff. Like, so I, what, I, like exactly. my, that, that was my question. What is your side hustle right now? My side hustle? I mean, you name it, man. I got, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm now able to, to invest in different businesses and, and I now get to apply what I've learned doing what I've done in, in the, in the last couple of, uh, in the last decade, essentially, um, you know, I'm back to content creating. So, you know, make creating videos every single day. I can't, I can't talk about my next height hustle side hustle because I, I, I haven't announced it yet. Uh, but it is, it is something that I've always been passionate about. It, it, it's, it falls right in line with esports and everything that I've learned. Uh, so that's my main thing. But aside from that, I have, you know, fishing has always been my passion. So I have a clothing company called Bashers, B A S S H E R S. Uh, Bashers is, was, is, it's like a, a an apparel line uh streetwear branding sort of uh clothes for for fishermen uh you know when i when i went to bass pro shop i would see that there was just nothing but flannel so it's just not my sign i'm a t-shirt kind of guy so i started making cool t-shirts um one of my friends is 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 in uh is, is in an industry right now that's uh that's that's in the process of being legalized and i see like this this massive opportunity there to to not get involved uh personally but through an investment so i, I don't know man it, it's for, for me uh standing around and, and not doing anything is never going to be the case uh I, never so that 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 time where you're talking about in three months i'm going to be sitting there it's like what am i doing why am i doing anything that's never they'll never happen because i'm always going to be doing something it's just that now i don't have to but now uh, what i'm saying is, is now i get to focus and be responsible for 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 what I'm doing for that guy, as opposed to what we're doing for like everybody that's under that. You know, now that we have now that we have the help of of you know the amount of people that we have working to help support that. Now I can, you know, mentally and physically support what what I want to do, which is hold. Yeah, and, and as time goes by, I guess uh, your job becomes more and more strategic and more and more macro. And it's just the it's just the, the way of life. Is the, the way things should work, right? Um, when it comes down to um, player relations, perhaps uh, you can't find someone as good as you probably are. But when it comes into finances, you can find you know a head yeah. of finances that is just fucking good at his job, and you don't want to do that job because you will do it ten times worse, right? When it comes into daily operations, you want to get ahead of operations. It's just a fucking beast, you know. So you know, as 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 the company grows, I guess, and and as you get into more and more position of power, you hire this this leadership positions or these very specific kind of roles and people yeah. that are super talented that are gonna do a much better job than you than do uh, than you do. Uh, I don't know about that, but yes, yeah, so they're gonna do a good job. I mean, in, in terms of accounting, <laughs> you you must oh, be yeah. fucking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I don't want to see it. I, I don't want to see a single receipt ever again in my life. Oh, no, exactly. I don't want to see that. <laughs> exactly. I fucking hate receipts, man. You know. It's like, I, <laughs> they're like you want a tournament you want cash price not my business you go collect no from, no from fuck <laughs> i i'm I, I get out of that as well I, i'm like you know at, at the very beginning i was very very involved in all of this like the first year and a half but after that i was like my brain is gonna fucking explode this is not gonna happen ever again yeah so yeah. You just i just hired the right people and, and just don't even want to know anything i just approve payments or whatever move on you know move on yeah, i don't yeah. want to know anything no, i hear you bro i hear you uh but yeah when it comes into player you know talent management it is it is fucking hard, man. Like to finding a person that because at the end of the day, when you build a team, you know, you build it, it's, it's a reflection of how you are, right? It's a the culture of the organization is a reflection of what you do on a daily basis and what you're willing to accept on a daily basis, right? So if I'm honest with you, that is the one area where I'm so worried about delegating, really. Um yeah. Everything else, there are better people than me for sure. You know, uh, literally everything else. Maybe not, I guess, content slash branding. Mm -hmm. I want to be very involved in that. Yeah, man, it's just so complicated, right? Like, you know, the right treatment. Not don't over spoil them, but don't treat them like they're in the army, like somewhere in the middle. And sometimes yeah. you have to give, sometimes you have to. It's so fucking hard. How do you deal with that yourself? Because you seem to be like a laid back. Is that a, is that the word? Yeah, like laid back. Yeah, you seem to be like a really laid back guy. 
and, and, and which many times is a good thing. And how did that play out for you? Well, I played out well. I, I, I treated every single one of my players as if they were my, my, my little brothers, right? Because I've always known how to be the oldest brother. You know, I have three siblings. Uh, my sister's a year younger. My brother's 10 years younger. And then 14 years younger is my, my youngest sister. So I've always known how to, how to be a, a, a leader in a sense. And I've always been very anti-babying people, right? Especially athletes or esports athletes. I don't, I, 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 I have almost zero time to baby them and, and nurture their feelings and 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 do all that. We're, we we need to get a job done, and this is your job. You're not getting along with somebody, you know. That's something that you and that person are gonna have to. I gotta have to fix within and if it can't be fixed then that's that but you know for me to be like oh well oh no he means this or no oh no he means that or you oh I understand how you're feeling the way you're feeling like I, as long as everything's fair there's really no possible way that I can lie to myself and be somebody that I'm not mm -hmm. and just like over like indulge someone or spoil them I just I, I just can't do that now you know for example when 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 Mixwell who who you better be taking good care of man oh uh, he's He's amazing. All right. Really Listen is. to me. So when, when Mixwell when Mixwell moved here, like I knew that I was going to have to help him out with absolutely everything, right? So when he needed to go to you know to uh, to get his to do his taxes or to to get his uh, banking, like I I I went with him because. That's what big brothers do. It's not. It's, it's it's not like I was spoiling him or that it was too much or anything. I, it's just something that I would do when I would bring people. Whenever I bring the CS team, you know, food for for the day or like I would go to Chipotle and get them all bowls burrito bowl. I didn't do that because I was taking care of them. I was doing that because that's what humans do, right? Like if if someone's busy and you have some free time to stop by somewhere and get something, you did that. It wasn't, there was never a moment where Look, I was just man, like, I have a perfect story for this. We had me, a, me. <laughs> God damn it, man. It just makes me laugh because it's so surreal. So we had a manager at some point in time in a game because I yeah. don't want to get this specific, right? Sure. And, and I remember we were, it was right before a tournament and I was there um just as as the owner right just being there before the game and and i'm speaking with the boys and and so on and one of them says hey i i, I would like to have a glass of water the way players say it, you know it was still respectful but it was the way the players say it. very straightforward yeah and and you know we had the manager there it was the it was the head coach the analyst the manager <laughs> and myself there you know yeah, and I'm like okay because you know my, my my instinct is that I will go and take the fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. water for yeah. everybody as well. I'm gonna bring yeah. fucking Doritos too, you know, and <laughs> and and so I'm like I'm I'm waiting there. I'm like okay, so and the manager goes in and says, you should just go and get it yourself. I'm like what the fuck? Like I goes got literally fire on the spot. Yeah, absolutely clueless about were they were they in the middle of a game or like practice or no they were like between practice games or exactly i don't know exactly how it was but it was like half an hour more or less before uh -huh. the official game right yeah, yeah so yeah. we were in the in the room where the team stays yeah, mental preparation right? man it's just... fuck me man just fucking give him the glass of water just make a sandwich like do whatever he says anything <laughs> yeah. you want to he, he wants a pig here or anything that is kind of reasonable just bring it yeah and 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 you know it just it was it was so surreal you know i'm like what do you think we want a manager for? So yeah. that you just arrange the mates? Yeah. Like, no, we want a manager because yeah. you literally are a personal agent and yeah. whenever it's needed an assistant for the player. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm the founding CEO and yeah. I brought glasses of water, I brought yeah. fucking sandwiches, apples, anything. Yeah. That's yeah. what you do. I remember yeah. we were in a, in a, in a, I think ESL one, some tournament in CSGO. And I remember I had to run like one kilometer and a half, two I mean, let's say one mile, right? A little bit more yeah. than a mile um, to, to bring Red Bulls because the guys didn't want to drink whatever was drinking. Well, they were, they were drinking in the tournament. They needed mm -hmm. Red Bulls. So I had to yeah. fucking find Red Bulls. And I did find Red Bulls, right? Yeah. I just run around. And when I see people around me not taking that level of commitment, yeah. it just burns my guts, man. Yeah. It just makes me feel oh, so yeah. angry, you know? Yeah. They, they yeah, have no maybe 10 tournaments in their life that matter. That's one of them. Fuck, man, it's, <laughs> it's but I, I would understand if you guys are all like sitting around watching a movie or something and then he turns to the to the assistant and says yo give me a water I, at oh, that no, point no, I, no, i'd no, be super okay with like get your ass up and get yeah, it yourself well, sure yeah get your ass up of course but it, you know it was just a very if you're at work though morning, you know? and your job yeah. is to be mentally preparing yeah, exactly. or, or practice yeah no that's absolutely that's what manager for so i hear you and, and this is exactly the reason why as i told you i feel so whew, 
you know, I guess you can always find good people, right? But yeah. it's just the thing I have the hardest time delegating, to be honest. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this. Now here the tables are turned. Um what what uh are are you taking care of yourself, man? Because I know I know that like one of my biggest regrets ever, like throughout this whole process, is that I stopped creating I stopped doing what I liked to do, which is creating content for about two years where I was building where I was helping build the, the, the brand, right? So I focused all my time onto this and not enough time onto that. So my question to you, right, as a as obviously you, you are a player, so you understand like what it's like to 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 have that sort of a uh, the sort of mentality where you are you are talent essentially because you are the player. Um, I, I just want to make sure that that you're at least considering taking taking some Carlos time and and and, and making sure that you're because players some are going to stay forever, but some are going to are, are going to come and go. You're the you're the one that's going to be uh, almost the the constant that's going to keep you know the, the the culture and 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 your values alive. You said or try to at least okay because things happen. Um, but like, are, are you taking care of yourself? I want to make sure that that that, that you are, or at least put it out there that that you do have so, to make time for yourself. So it's 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 funny that you mention it. It's actually incredibly relatable that you ask this question. It's just so in sync with what I'm going through these days. Um, first of all, uh, I mean, actually, when you, when you were asking the question at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was I was thinking, is he talking about my bazookas? Because that and that and denial. Oh, wait. The, the, the bazookas are doing its <laughs> doing their work. I'm going, you know, I'm going to gym five to six days a week. That's a parenthesis. Now I get into the question. Um, <laughs> as you know, we had the, or I had the, the, the brand also the world. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. um, incredibly large. It was, you know, when I was a player um, as an esports only individual, I was the largest back in, back then when I was playing and streaming mm -hmm. and so on. And the problem I found, I mean, it's a problem and an opportunity. When I created G2 called Gamers 2 back in the day, by the way, fuck me for the fucking name. Um, but I remember that Ocelot World was always going to be before Gamers 2. Mm -hmm. And every person in esports will just say, ah, it's just Ocelot's team, you know? Yeah. And, and I wanted to, and I, it's, it's, I guess on one side is a humbling a humble move, right? On the other side, it's a smart move because Oslo World is based upon a brand, Oslo, that in a way depends on competitive success. That's how I build the brand. The brand is built upon video game competitive success. And, and so I took the decision to, you know, leave Oslo World behind. I didn't renew, even though I could, I didn't renew any of the partnerships. Mm -hmm. I stopped updating the website i stopped doing everything no stream yeah. no nothing yeah. and for the purpose of focusing all the efforts yeah. into esports and to be honest with you i am a hundred percent like so very happy that i did that because yeah. i don't think you two would have gotten what it got without me coming into a second page yeah um however now i do find that as you said i will be in g2 I mean, maybe I become the chairman five years. From, who knows? Like, who knows, yeah. right? Who knows yeah. what the future holds? In this space, I will always be, who knows? Exactly. But I will always be somehow related to the company because mm -hmm. this is literally my first co I mean, if I, would, if I would be a tattoo guy, I would wear the fucking tattoo on my heart, right? Yeah. But I'm not a tattoo guy, so no tattoos for me. Um, yeah. but, so that's what I mean, right? G2 will always be in my heart and, and this company in general. And, and I will always be a part of it. So as the common denominator, I certainly need to take care of, um, you know, building that fan base that understands that, you know, okay, so this is the guy either in charge or this is the guy that founded it or whatever, the yeah. same way people do with you, you know, and relate mm -hmm. to that. I think that's yeah. so important. And I'm starting to identify right now or the last few months that this is important indeed. So I started, you know, I, I, I stream uh, during yeah. the weekends when I'm not on a business trip. And and uh, when it comes into my my business trips, one out of three business trips, I make a blog. I'm starting out. It's really 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 small numbers, low low views, but I don't care. I'm just you know learning, taking step by step. And yeah. you know the direction I'm taking is certainly to build that that personal brand. Uh, yeah. Now this time as Carlos R, you know I want to rebrand it a little bit um, because you know I'm now an, an, a, a businessman so to say, and yeah. not that much of a video video game player, right? But uh, that, is a, that is the idea, that is the intention. And to be honest, you know, people like you, uh, in a way, do um, inspire me a lot, you know, because I'm like, you know, 
not everything. You know, if I just focus on the business, yeah, I'll be far worse off on the business than if I focus on the business and my personal brand. I'm gonna do. I, th uh, I think you can do both, man. You're, you're, I don't think sure. you're giving yourself. I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. And and on the on the I, the, the reason I recommend vlogging to to everyone that I meet is because you know can can you imagine if you I mean I I obviously like. Uh, maybe I'm different, but if I can go back to the very, very early, early, early stages of of optic, I'm talking about when when I had my daughter, my newly born daughter, on my hand while I'm on a on a on a call with with a sponsor trying to get a sponsor or whatever. I, I if I can go back and relive those moments via video and 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 see my 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 train of thought back then and how it's evolved throughout the years. Um, it, it's just history, man. It's just like it's like a it's like a photo album, like a it's true. photo album essentially of all of that. So I, I, if anything else, man, whether you publish the videos or not, whether you make like I have I have conversations with myself from like 2012, 2013. I, I think I just found one from 2012 when I just opened up my laptop and I needed to vent because there was, there was nobody. My wife wasn't there. It was just me in my office, and I opened that up and I just started talking into it and started complaining about everything that was going wrong and it was so therapeutic that i that you know i vented without affecting everybody else around me like so my negative vibe that i was feeling just stayed in there and i never published it it's like it's sitting there um but i get to go That's back and, and and relive that right so i think i think uh, from a therapeutic standpoint and from like a you know, being positive and, and bringing, especially from the lead, from a leadership standpoint, as you know, you can never ever seem vulnerable or weak or yeah, sure. clueless ever, 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 ever. Because sure about what you do, non hesitant, yeah. just fucking move forward. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Doesn't matter. Be consequent. Move. Yeah, on. yeah. So I, I I suggest that you do that. If you publish it, you publish it, man. But at least you're keeping like this this video track of 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 what it is that you're doing. Just recommendation. Take it for what it's worth. No, this is this is fucking great. I mean, I I I, I speak I spoke with you I think about a month ago. What was the camera I used? You gave me some. <laughs> you gave me the name of the camera. Uh, that's that's gonna be my next camera, for my for my birthday. This one, <laughs> undoubtedly. Oh, you you're showing it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, my sidekick, my uh, the 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 bear of all my secrets. Hey, princess. You know when when I. When I am, um, I'm, I, I no longer have that kind of feeling, but I remember the first times I was kind of showing myself or either for Instagram or whatever, you know, for, <laughs> to post a video or whatever. I was so self-conscious at the beginning. I'm like, people will think I'm retarded just talking with myself, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and and then as, as time went by, you just lose that, you lose that fear, you know? And, yeah. And, and it really just, like at some point, you stop caring, right? So for everyone that's watching, Oh, I still care. I still care. I can't. Oh, yeah, one hundred percent. It's, it's sometimes You're just weird, man. That. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, go on, go on. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, I was about to say that for those people that are on, on the verge, you know, uh, not a, not only just uploading videos on YouTube, but also you know just growing their social media. Like their personal brands are literally the most important thing. Like yeah. if your personal brand is inexistent or irrelevant, you're not gonna get anywhere because no one knows you exist, right? Uh, so you know everybody has their own kind of uh, you know what they're good at. Uh, yeah. just embrace that embrace it through social media embrace it through videos or whatever and just don't care yeah. about what people think whenever you record yourself i see myself in the gym sometimes <laughs> recording yeah. i see all the germans near me <laughs> yeah. looking at me like what is this guy doing you know yeah but uh, it's but but, but in, in those situations man think about it like this right are you going to care about the 50 people 50 five zero people that are in there judging you or should you really care about the 250 exactly. people that are judging you absolutely the same way and, and and then really say, you know what? I care about the thousands of people that are here to really support me and really love me, right? Because people are going to judge you regardless. So it's either you sure. focus on the small people that are going to judge you or the or the larger. In my opinion, I will always, always, always focus on the larger group no matter what. If it's five, 50 people hating me, I'd rather have 250 people hating me because I know <laughs> that, the, that the dividend or the, or the multiplication of, of that same people to the real audience is going to be uh, way different. Uh, I've come to love that hate, man. I've come to... Kind of enjoy i mean I, on one side it affects me in a way that i want to learn like why is these people hating on me but mm -hmm. at the same time i've come to realize that i mean it's joyful to actually read some of that because it, it really does mean that they care and just yeah. the same people mentioning you i don't even block them i just don't block them i just want to read about you know what they say all the time because i know yeah. they're watching the video they're watching oh, it. i'm petty 
I'm like the com- how, how old are you? I'm 27. 27. I'm 38. I'm the complete opposite of you, bro. I I if I see someone being dumb on Twitter, I almost feel like it's my job as a bigger <laughs> as a big brother to call him out to make sure that he understand that he's being dumb. And I am petty. I am petty to no end. When somebody talks, what not. I block people nonstop, but I, no, I don't just I don't just block them, okay? And I took this from our friend Hastro, okay? Hastro uh, taught me this this move, okay? When you're verified and you follow someone, they get a notification that says, you know, Hex followed you, right? So when they go check to see if I follow, so I follow them, count to thirty, unfollow them, and then block them. So when they go see to see if I really follow them, they know that I blocked them for sure. <laughs> Just, that's how petty I, I get sometimes. Damage. Yeah, I, I took that from Hastro, man. He he said that, and I'm like, that's so savage. I need to do that. So it doesn't happen all the time, but when I do, it's so that I use the mute button more than anything. That's funny. I I heard a I heard a a, a baby talking to you. Was it that uh, your daughter? Yeah, it's my daughter. She's saying that we have a a house appointment in a little bit. All but right. I want to I, I want to stay here and continue. When when can we redo this, man? Because I I'm having I'm having a good time. Yeah, same here. I mean, whenever you know we're doing this every week or maybe maybe every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, no, before before we reach uh, podcast number ten, we can maybe hang hang around again. Really? Yeah, I'd, I'd be really interested in it, man. Because I, I'm 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 a big 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 fan of podcasts, right? Same uh, here. It's I, I've I've always. And, and and I'll tell you this story that I've never told this story before, okay, uh, as, as, a, as a token of my appreciation for this. I love podcasts so much that still to this day, I hold a grudge against Hutch, well, my teammate Hutch, my, my good friend yeah. Hutch, because very early on in, this, in, in, the, in the Call of Duty scene, he had a podcast called Host Migration. It was him, Scene Enters, and uh, Tabe. Uh, and I never got invited to that. He invited Hastro, okay? He invited Hastro, but he didn't invite his own teammate. And we were team, well, we were teammates at the time, yeah. But he never he invited me to host. Granted, he, he took me for granted, man. He took me for granted, this guy. <laughs> but you know, to this day, like I'm, I'm super salty that I was never, uh, I was never part of that podcast because, again, you know, I, I, I listen to podcasts. I don't listen to music when I'm in the car. I don't listen, you know, to music when I'm, when I'm driving around or uh, when I'm at the gym. I literally Which only listen podcast to podcasts. Do you, do you like? Um, I listen to to a lot of Gary V. I listen uh, to uh, to just news and technology news. I don't know the name of the names of them. Uh, I have Dr. Drew Adam Carolla for comedy sake, uh, but I, I you know you know what what I listened to uh, this very morning. It was yeah. fucking hilarious. You know Joe Rogan. Yeah. Oh, that that. Oh, yeah. Of course that one too. H three H three podcast. I, I I started listening to that most recently. He he had this podcast with uh, Dan Bilzerian. You know who that guy is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it was the most hilarious podcast I've ever listened to. That motherfucker's crazy, man. Yeah. Wait, was this the one where he told the story about uh, his heart attack? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, I mean, he, that guy is just is a baller, Bro, man. When you have a chance, one of my favorite uh, JRE podcasts was when he interviewed uh, or when he had a podcast with uh, Guy Ritchie. Uh, Guy Ritchie is one of my favorite directors of all time. Made my favorite movie of all time called Snatch. Uh, but he... That that one was really really good. It got me like into this like so motivated like, you know, uh, uh, you know mentality that I just wanted to do that like nonstop. Man, I, it, I don't know. It's it's the way I I, I am though. That's awesome. You know, we we have a we have a a question from Get Right. You know Get Right, of course, right? Oh, of course, man. The legendary Christopher Alessund. That's my man right there. That's my man um, right there. <laughs> I uh, I know him for uh, actually a lot of years. You know, since I was a player, uh, even in World of Warcraft years. I think he was like, he's starting. The guy, um, he's uh, honestly, honestly, also a, gr- a good human being. But fucking, how long has he been playing him uh, at the highest possible at level? At the highest level, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ! How hard is that? That's ridiculous. Impossible. So he he's asking. What's the biggest way? Actually, I'm going to rephrase a little bit because uh, he was probably eating cereals while he was typing this shit. <laughs> What's the biggest waste Optic and G2 has done through the history of the Orcs? Feeling like whatever you've done to put in time. Yeah, so essentially, is there anything that you feel um, you know, was a waste uh, in, in terms of resources or kind of time management? You know, Or in other words, even something that you would have liked to do and you uh, and you uh, feel bad about not having done it. 
Mm. Oh man, I'm 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 super anti anti that. I mean, aside from like like I said, me. It's not hard to remember like, what I look. If you're an optimist by nature, yeah. it's fucking yeah. hard to yeah, yeah, yeah. remember these moments, you know. No, I I mean I embrace my 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 uh I embrace being a pessimist. Um and obviously like being a, being an optimist as well, right? But I, I I do I do find that if if you just think like you have to almost get that close to 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 your negative self to know what you don't want to become. Um and in times where I get really, really negative, I know that I'm gonna be able to get out of that 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 slump and then just turn that into like something you know, it's, it's a waste of time to be that negative, but I do like to get, you know, in my own head and, and, and worry about certain things because, you know, the, your fear of something is instincts yeah, that, sure. that are that are nature to you, right? So if you're afraid of something or if you're being, if you feel anxious about something or if you feel like negative about something, like go with it, like go with it and, 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 and explore it, but then get out, right? Like get out immediately and then just go along because it, it will lead you to certain answers. It will lead you to certain scenarios that you may not have gone to if you were in a positive mind that uh but as far as like regrets or anything like that i i i, I don't enjoy them but i i do i do uh keep my failures like very very close to me because i i i want to never ever repeat them um and i took this from a from a show called uh, big little lies okay it's like but they were talking about grudges i talk about failures and i and i keep my failures i tend to them like little pets man like little plants i i, I have to have them like near me so i know what so, so i know what not to do there. yeah what about you yeah, man, you know, I, I am a, an optimist by nature in the sense of um, whenever something bad happens, mm -hmm. I try to look at it pragmatically yeah. and, and I try to take the best decision without involving emotions. Sometimes I involve, I involve or very often I involve gut feeling. Uh, and then if that decision happens to be wrong, mm -hmm. then... Um, you know, and I learned the lesson. I move on. I make sure I learn the lesson, though. I don't commit the same mistakes twice. Uh, at least, at least very often. If it's a big picture, if it's a, if it's an important item, then I definitely don't. Uh, but what I do is that if something bad happens to me that I have no control over or really little control over, I try to always look at how can I use this right to my advantage. And and I've there's there are a few there are a few examples. I remember we had a. Um, we had a really bad run in uh, League of Legends MSI 2016, and um, we it was a it was a fucking horrendous tournament. We came in from winning EULCS, and um, we also won against uh, Origin, which is the is, is a, one of the fan favorite teams. And uh, you know all the all the fans of Fnatic and Origin, which happen to be very overlapped, they're very similar to each other. Um, they uh, were hating us so hard when we shit the bed on MSI. Yeah, that that it, it was it was horrendous, right? And so instead of just feeling bad about it, and which maybe is what we should have done, I don't know. Uh, we we <laughs> used that opportunity to uh, build this storyline that we yeah. were the villains, you know. So yeah. we created content around us being the villains. It was like really time taking it was a lot of resources into that lots of thinking and and we got so many so much reach and so many views and so many haters and so many lovers it's yeah. a very polarizing experience yeah. uh but you know it just shows right what i mean exactly with this analogy it was a bad very bad tournament that we turned into a, actually a good thing a good branding thing lots of brand awareness and and, and so on and so forth so uh, i do enjoy that i do enjoy you know the same that you know i did judo when i was very very young uh and and the key of judo i don't know it's, it's also judo in english yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so the, the key of judo is that you uh, when your opponent is coming to you you use that momentum yeah. to put him down right awesome, yeah. And, and that's exactly what I, what you know, my philosophy with all of this. You use the momentum awesome. of whatever's happened and put it down. That's cool. Um, so yeah, you but, have to, yeah. man. Good, good for you, dude. No fuck. If if you don't, you go fucking crazy, man. You know, so much shit happens on that, man. You you've been, you own fucking up to gaming. Like every day, if you would be, uh, by nature, a pessimist, like a pessimist. Mm. You would wake up and you would want to kill yourself because so many things happen in the day to day that you're like, oh, I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with that. I can't yeah. deal with this. But then you can actually. So 
uh, you know, even though you say you, you, you embrace those kind of bad moments and blah, 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 I don't consider that a pessimist. I consider that someone, someone realistic, pragmatic, and at the same time, you know, very emotional towards, uh, to, towards that, which keeps it in your, you know, close to your heart, which makes it yeah. sure that you don't ever commit that again. Yeah. So yeah, regrets, specific regrets. I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you kind of one, uh, there are always things you could have done better. Yeah. Maybe I could have, look, th th there's a regret here. I'm gonna put it out there. I should have. I should have. Um, uh, I should have. Uh, how to put this? I should have put way, way, way more efforts into um, hiring some of the roles that I hired. Um, basically, because I saw myself months after firing these people, mm -hmm. uh, and it was definitely my fault because I didn't make enough. Um, research in terms of you know who are the other candidates and how good are they in comparison yeah, yeah. Yeah. i didn't put enough work so that that's a regret but you know that's pretty much about it you you go you learn it's not like you know i guess you can consider regrets when there is like a timeline this day is when life ends then you can consider everything before uh, that didn't go well i regret but because life keeps going on oh, you yeah. can't consider that as regrets because you can always adapt right oh yeah um, I, I think I just I just turned you crazy with my with my no dude no no I, 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 I no you you don't you don't know how much I, I think I like like you said at the at the beginning I think that the, the similarities between you and I are like are like massive and then right there what you said about like you know life and and you know like wasting your time on 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 shit that's you know when you're ninety is it really gonna matter you know it's like it's it, it touched right because I, I feel the same way yeah so no you didn't you didn't drive so, me crazy I've already been crazy. <laughs> we we have we have seven minutes left. Uh, why don't you tell me just big picture? How was your run in the LCS this year? Uh, well, considering the fact that we went uh, five and thirteen, uh, it was you know it was it was a learning process. I I what what I'll say about this and uh, you know uh, you know living and dwelling on, uh, on 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 the season is just not something that I'm interested in doing. I I, I care about the the future. What what I will say though is that having met uh, somebody like Roman and and uh, and Zabatine and you know some of the players and I only got to 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 engage with the players uh I think twice maybe throughout the season because they're in LA I'm in Dallas and I was in the middle of a of the move of my house the move of my family and you know finding my my uh my place in this new thing I uh I didn't get a chance to really to really uh be Hector or be the hex that my players have known to know so I I I uh I won't touch too much on that uh but you know having met uh, Zab and and uh, and Roman specifically, I think uh, made you know made it all worth it to me because not often do you in this prof in, in a professional environment and in a growing environment as it is esports you don't often get to find that sort of talent uh, and and that's that's what I'll focus on I'll focus on those positives uh, but yeah no it was a, it was a disappointing season but it is what it is. What, what about you know disappointing some from a content I mean sorry from a competitive standpoint what about content and overall brand awareness and, and the number of fans you got and things like that how how, how did LCS treat you uh no listen the LCS I mean being there in person like I I I, I almost felt bad for for my Call of Duty team and and the rest of the other teams because the LCS really really treats you like you should be treated like all the facilities everything that they give you there is That's like good, yeah. it's, it's it's good yeah and, and look don't get me wrong you know uh, uh blizzard is doing the same thing with the overwatch league they they treat the players incredibly uh the facilities are amazing that and, and all that and um you know, it really makes you appreciate what you don't have in the other esports. But at the same time, you know that that's what makes those esports the esports. That's what drives the, the 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 chip on the shoulder is what what allows other players to get to to where they're at, right? Um, but yeah, no, I, I, they they treated they treated the the org very well. It was a welcoming, you know, open arms uh, sort of scenario when we applied. Uh, but yeah, so you know, success in that in that area as well. Very good. How much do you follow your teams? Uh, uh like all of them. Yeah, like how much do you follow the results? How much do you know about you know? I, I don't yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I I don't watch the only match that I attended. Uh, I mean, was, person, you can watch online, I guess. Yeah, yeah uh, online I, I I nowadays I tend to take more time for myself and I don't watch. I mean, I I don't even watch the, the Call of Duty team when when I'm at the events, right? Uh, so no, I, I not not a lot, but you know, for for the LCS, I I needed to be there in person uh, when we competed against a hundred thieves, not because we're competing against. <laughs> You know, for two reasons. One, you know, we're competing against 100 thieves. More importantly, uh, as as a as a 
as a person, I wanted to see uh, you know a, a player uh, that they came that came up with me, uh, uh, a little brother that that is my family, uh, you know, achieve a goal that not a lot of people have have achieved, right? So when when Nate shot. You know, announced that that he had a hundred thieves. Like it was one of my, one, you know, it was a, a very very proud moment for me because I, it's you know I saw, I saw you know a uh, uh, a player you know from the beginning just like rise to to the top of of owning an organization, which to me was like uh, how is he I doing? had to. Oh, he's doing well, man. He's doing he's doing very good, very good. You know, I you guys- I, I I actually have never ever spoken with him. I of course know him, uh, mm-hmm. but I've never spoken with him in person. I. You know what? I I'll actually hit him up and and uh, try to set one of these with him. Well, mm-hmm. I let him know if he's interested. Uh, so you're still in touch. You're still friends. You're still. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's. Uh, we were literally just texting this morning. He was making fun of me because some <laughs> of the videos that I'm uploading to Instagram mirror too much, in his opinion, to Gary V, which is also a good friend of mine mind you so he was just like roasting me a little bit but i was like i don't care i'm gonna continue to do it as content i like doing content it is what it is all right very good well man i know you have to go uh i want to be extremely mindful of your time this Thank was you. an absolute pleasure uh, and i truly hope that we can make more time uh, oh absolutely all right cool now i will come back on to this one whenever you have me but you have to promise that when i launch my podcast bro you got it. Name, like, you're coming like, okay I'm there. I'm there already. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right, Good. Bro. It's been a great pleasure, bro. Thank you, brother. You too. For everybody else, don't go anywhere because I'm going to keep being here with you for 20, 30 more. I don't even know how much. You know, I, li- I like talking. I like talking, people. You know, I'm a person that likes speaking. So hang on in there. We're going to have one to two minutes uh, 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 kind of a... <laughs> Let's just call it a, a technical a technical pause here. I need to pee. That's the absolute truth. Uh, so I apologize for that. One, two minutes. Stay in there. I love you very much. That was Hector from Optic. He's a fucking beast. See you soon. Hello, everybody. That was less than two minutes. And that wasn't a technical break. That was me going to the restroom. How does that feel? Anyway, that was Hector from Optic Gaming. He is, you know, as, as you guys saw, he's a brother. You know, he's, he's a character. He's a great guy. Um, he is known, of course, for the content pieces he creates on a daily basis almost. Or I don't know if he does it anymore, but I, every now and then I watch his vlogs. Um, you should check it out. I think in YouTube, give me one second. I'm going to check it out. YouTube Hex. I think it's Hex. Um, H3CZWE. That's his YouTube. Check it out. He puts us some great, co- great content. Simultaneously, why don't you go to youtube.com slash G2 Esports and check what we do. And we do some cool shit too. And while we're at it, youtube.com slash Ocelot World too. I upload my shit as well. We just hired a new video editor. Uh, his name I cannot share with you because then I'd had to I'd had to kill you. The guy is wonderful. 
I hope you check my channel. Please subscribe and uh, you check whatever vlogs and whatever I'm uploading. Okay, I'm a, I'm a focus on on what Hector told me. It's actually a good thing, man. Just build your brand seriously. If I could look, listen, I look back into my life and I'm like. Tell me one thing, Carlos. This is Carlos talking to Carlos. I like to do this. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a personal guy. It's Carlos talking to Carlos. So, Carlos, tell me one thing, that one thing that made your life be in the position it is today. I'll tell you what it is. Pure branding. I built my brand from the bedroom of my parents' home. And ever since then, it just took off. Why am I... Br Listen, it's fucking hot in here, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. This room is hot. Really hot. I'm wearing a scarf. Do you think I'm stupid? I'm a genius, people. I'm a genius. You don't understand. Branding is my trademark. The scarf has to come back, you know? So if I could tell you one thing, whatever it is that you do, Whatever it is, you're a truck driver, you're a gardener, it doesn't matter, man. Your brand, which means whatever you do on a daily basis, whoever you communicate with on a daily basis, um, that is literally what carries you. If, if you're the best gardener out there, you know, how will you let people know? People don't know shit. People just are used to, to, you know, to get screwed by that company that is supposed to send you gardeners every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m., and instead they come at 11.30 a.m. and they're actually still in your water things. Don't be that gardener. And how, you know, how, how do people know that you're not that gardener? People know it because of your brand. Your brand car carries you. When you, production just told me don't be an NPC. What are you talking about production? Come fucking do my job. Lothar, that, that's a production by the way. Explain to us how many wins you have in Fortnite. Three wins? That's not too bad for someone like you. How, what's your KDA? 0 0.3. 0 0.3 KDA, three total victories. That's not bad, Lothar. Why don't you check his <laughs> his, his Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Lothar HS, right? Lothar HS, there you go. Anyway, that was my two cents in regards to the branding. It's just so important, guys. Like, doesn't matter what you do. Your brand will carry you. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's just so important. And not, not everything is Twitter or whatever. It's just the brand that you portray to the people, you know? I remember I have a very good story, actually. I don't know if I, if I told this to... Uh, I, I think I told this to in, in the previous podcast to uh, Richard. Richard Lewis was in the previous podcast with us. And, and I remember I told the story. I was in a tournament. Or maybe I didn't, and I told someone else. Listen, it doesn't matter. I was I was in the tournament in, in Tenerife and I had a really bad game in that tournament in League of Legends it was. And it was like the worst day of my life the day after, you know. Like I mean the day before and the day after. I was like feeling so bad, you know. Uh, but I remember I, I, I read a book. Uh, uh, I mean not only a book, but it's just a combination of reasons that made me uh woke that day, you know. Uh, I'm sorry for using the word woke for everybody that feels personally attached to that one. I'm sorry. Uh but um I remember I was going down the elevator and I told to myself, today, even if I feel like shit right now, I'm going to act as if today was the best day of my life. And here he is, this fucking idiot, going down the elevator with a big ass smile in his face, saying to the receptionist, good morning. I hope you have a fantastic day. In Spanish, of course, it was Tenerife. I hope you have a fantastic day. I did. God damn it, Carlos. Turns out that day was one of the best days of my life for no fucking reason. Uh, that was the brand I carried that day, you know? Even if I would feel like shit from inside, the brand I carried to the outside was that one of a winner, you know? And my day ended up being a day of a winner. And I ended up being super happy that day. Just my two cents. Anyway, I have a few questions here from the people. Um, by the way, if you guys let me know in the chat if I'm talking too much. But the thing is that if I don't production, if I don't talk, no one talks. Okay? Don't tell me shit. I need to talk. Luminous Aura says, which branch of industries is most likely to invest in your opinion? I have no fucking idea what that means, but I think I'm gonna rephrase your question. Okay. I think that means which industries are most likely to invest in a company like G2, I guess, right? 
in, in, in that case, and if it's not that question, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just answer this question. Um, look, the, this is the, enter I mean, we're, we are looking at esports as these guys are competitors, these guys, you know, electronic kind of, I mean, video game competition and yada, yada. But the truth is that when the game in League of Legends is played between two very good teams and they're literally 0 0 mini 22, that's boring. That's not a game that will be watched by millions and millions of people. When that game is 15 13, at mini 22, then that game is gonna be fun. You know that game is gonna be fun. Maybe a clown fiesta, but it's gonna be a good game, you know, to, for the viewer. What I mean with this is that what builds this industry forward, it's not the competitive success or how well the teams play in terms of like macro and shit. No, it's actually the dramas, the storylines, you know, a game that is very kind of chaotic. It's all those things that happen within the game and outside the game that build this kind of industry and, and its success. So before we get into uh, whether esports should be a sport or not, we should just tell the following. Esports is just a branch of the entertainment industry. And as such, the investors that are most interested in investing in a team like ours or uh, in an esports company are all within the entertainment industries, right? You can look at Hollywood, you can look at um, you know music, you can look at traditional sports. You can look at all those. So those, that industry, like the industry of entertainment, which is like incredibly big and large, right? Media companies, like all these people are the ones that are going to be the most interested in investing in an esports company. Then after that, I would say that technology companies, um, you know, Silicon Valley companies, you know, you, you see a lot of technology-based companies uh, kind of leaping into this, uh, into the esports world. And, and and you know getting getting interested increasingly interested of course you have some you know uh some other private capital but that, you know i'm not going to count on those uh but um as per industries is definitely entertainment technology banking you can name it as well um the same person asks what is the main target demographic of sponsors for esports so the this is the beauty of esports okay in traditional sports you see people um that are 65 years of age watching a football game, whether it's American football or soccer or whatever, you know, um, from their homes. And all of a sudden you see um, this Volvo ad, right? Or this, whatever, the new car for youngsters, right? Here's the thing. The brand that is displaying that ad, that commercial on TV, is paying for that 65 year old watching his commercial. That 65 year old will most likely not wanna buy that car. And if he buys that car, it's probably still not fully worth because what you wanna do as a car manufacturer brand is to pick up that 20 year old, make him a fan of Mercedes or make him a fan of Volvo, or whatever, and then build Kind of his love for that brand throughout his life. How many people do you guys know that are Mercedes Benz lovers or BMW? I mean, I know so many people. Yeah, I know it's just kind of stupid, but I, you know, I currently drive a BMW, but I could very much drive a Porsche. I don't, I don't care, right? I just don't care. Uh, and and but many people are like, I only wanna drive a BMW. And that's just the way they grow up. It's just the first car. They have some kind of nostalgia effect because their grandpa gave it, you know, their 17-year-old BMW that was about to die anytime soon. And, you know, and they just grew, right? So that's what these brands want. And these brands are not going to get you to love the brand on a long-term scenario unless they catch you up early. And that 65-year-old they're paying ads for is not a worth Ad. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not the return of investment is must be really low for every 60, you know, if you take a thousand 65 year olds that watch that ad, a really low percentage will buy that Volvo car, right? Uh, the, the beauty of esports, and now I'm getting into the point, is that it caters exactly to the audience of 18 to 24, 
16 to 25, you know what I mean? Maybe you go to Hearthstone, which is more like 20 to 29, 30. But then you go to League of Legends or Fortnite. <laughs> if you go to Fortnite, you go to 12, 12 to 20, you know? <laughs> but anyway, my point is that that's exactly what brands want. And that's exactly why, one of the reasons why esports will keep growing. It's a generational aspect. The same way you could have gone 120 years back and say, imagine you, let's, let's say guys, let's say we're 120 years back in time, okay? And you have the opportunity to buy, uh, to create, not to buy, but to create a company uh, that does footwear uh, for sports, to create uh, Real Madrid, right? And to create uh, what else was not popular back then and now it's really popular, like some kind of basketball team, right? Wouldn't you just spend all your money into that? Of course you would, you know, because it's the very beginning of it and it becomes a generational aspect. That's exactly where we are with esports. My son, Leonardo, he's about to be two years old, a fantastic, beautiful, I love that, I love that kid. Um, you know, he, he may love or hate esports, who knows? But he'll be watching. I mean, he, he, sorry, he will know that they exist. His friends in school, his friends in high school will know who Oslo is, will know who Carlos R is when Carlos R is interviewed in Saturday Night Live after G2 Esports wins uh, Worlds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this, this will happen. It's, a, it's generational. That's it. I hope I answered your question. I'm sorry, bro. I, I speak so I speak so much. Production, I'm not sorry for you. You stay here until I want. You keep your ass there. John John Jean. Nice, nice, nice nickname there, huh? John John Jean. As do you think the ULCS long-term partnership process will attract other major sport organizations like the NBA and the NALCS? In the NALCS, I'm assuming. Um I mean Will it attract other major sport organizations? Yes. Will it attract major sport organizations from North America? You know, I think some, I mean, some may be interested, but because it's an European based asset, right? Uh, where you're, or I guess you know, it's not an asset. I mean, I guess you can count it as an asset. Uh, but the, the, you know, the long term partnerships in Europe are going to benefit European stakeholders the most right because you understand the culture of europe you understand how to kind of maneuver within all these different languages and cultures and you know what i mean all these different dynamics which is very different from north america we, we can get into that in a second uh but my, my, my short answer would be there will be traditional sports that want to invest in the ulcs um probably the higher percentage will be from europe very likely. ULCS is a fantastic product. This year, they kicked ass. Like, production quality was fucking amazing. Shoutcasters did a great job. Uh, you know, even Shock, I mean, uh, Shocks, the, the, the host, which, yeah, it's, it's just pronounced like Shocks, the play, our player. But uh, Shocks, the host, uh, is doing a fantastic job. It's just, honestly, everything about the, 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 the uh, ULCS right now screams quality. And that's something that all these traditional sports organizations and teams are looking at of course they want to cater into those 16 to 24 year old that follow our games uh, many of us are there i'm on the i'm 27 I'm, I'm on the verge i'm i'm an old man already you know but most of you guys are again actually this is no you know i'm actually wrong this podcast is catered to more mature audiences uh, i will say this podcast is catered for the 18 no this podcast is catered to the one from the one to 75 years of age people I'm widening my range. Um, how important is a CSGO major slot for an organization? <laughs> this, is a, this is a good question because you know exactly that by my answer, I'm telling you what's happening. <laughs> I love this. This motherfucker, listen, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you this. You're a smart motherfucker, okay? I'm gonna give you that. Really smart guy. <sighs> CSGO major slot. It's incredibly important. You can you you can cut it there. You can do the, the, the Twitch clip there. You know, Twitch clip ends there. 
<laughs> it just goes Reddit, CSGO. Oh my God, does this mean that? Blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, does this mean? Blah, blah. Everybody make their own assumptions. I love that. I love that. Rush B Podcast. Oh, actually, these guys. Okay. So at Rush B Pro Podcasts, which is a podcast about CSGO, I think. Uh, feel free to check it out, guys. I'm not endorsing it. I don't know what they talk about, but I think it's something related to CSGO. Ask, what is the biggest thing that you have learned from being a part of Counter-Strike? The single, I mean, the, the biggest thing I learned in Counter-Strike is, first of all, <laughs> that French teams are batshit crazy, okay? Here I am, hoping we can keep a lineup together for two years straight. So French teams, batshit crazy. Great people, though. Great human beings. Fantastic human beings. But batshit crazy. I'm going to tell you that. Um, more things. I, I, you know, one, one, one of the things that um, I'm very proud about, and I'm actually really proud about this, is that before we created G2 Kingwin as an international team and found success, we got third in the major in Clutch in Apoca, Dreamhack Clutch in Apoca. It was a major tournament. Before that moment, there were actually no really successful teams that were not national based. So in other words, there were no international, like really good international teams in CSGO. So I love the fact that we broke the mold and then we sold that team to Face Clan um, for an undisclosed amount of doll, which uh, we of course spent in uh, Doritos and Mountain Dew and Coca-Colas, of course. We spent it all already. We have nothing left. Lots of Coca-Colas though. Like we have literally a whole, like three rooms full of Coca-Colas, just saying. Um, and yeah, that's about, honestly, I love fucking CS. I, I, I think CS is one of the best esports out there, man. It's just so amazing to watch. Like it doesn't matter how many tournaments you watch, it never gets old. Then when it comes into playing it, I think Valve could definitely do a better job. Let's, let's get personal here, Valve. The fuck are you doing with the game? Like, the game is legendary, right? It is your responsibility to make their game a, an ever-growing game. And look, I understand. I'm, I'm a businessman. Um, I'm, a, I'm a family guy at first, and then I'm a businessman second. But I'm a, I'm a businessman first, right? And I understand, you know, Steam is just so profitable. Steam, Steam is just... I mean, why would you spend money elsewhere? Um, but CSGO is like your crown jewel. CSGO is the thing that allows you to connect with fans. If you do a good job with CSGO, Valve, you will get... 100 years from now, CSGO will still be relevant if you just do very simple things to maintain a solid foundation. Very simple things, such as, you know, updating uh, this, how is it called, this missions thing that people love. Maybe you can add a little bit of twist into the matchmaking, uh, making it um, a must that you must be able to uh, play uh, many. By the way, production, one, one light here broke. Do me a favor and fix it. Don't worry about the camera. Just come here and fix it. Um, yeah, just update the game more, man. Like, you don't have to change the way sprays work. You don't have to change the sounds, as you already did. Uh, you know, skins are all nice and, and so on. Gun, you know, you know the, the gloves are good, too. But I guess you can give a little bit of twist into, you know, adding different maps to the pool, uh, making people have to play maps that they're not fully kind of comfortable playing. And all of a sudden, you have a new game, you know? The mechanics of that game are single, like probably the best mechanics any game had. I'm serious. Like the mechanics of Corner Strike, there will never be a game. There will never be a shooter. Doesn't matter how realistic it is. It's not about realism. It's about the actual... Is is How do you call this? Production. How do you call... Fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my words. Um, recoil. It's about the recoil. You know, the way the recoil works, it's, it's so unique. And 
Counter-Strike will always be relevant as long as you do the bare minimum to update it. 100 years from now, Counter-Strike will carry your ass. Come on, Valve. Why is the G2 logo slash mascot a samurai? This is a great question. Look, man, here's the thing. When I created this company, which was called, and listen, I'm going to tell you the name in a second, but I want to underline the fact that me telling you the name of the team is just, I just do it so that I never, ever commit such mistake again. The, le the name of the team that I created was Gamers 2. All right? I had no fucking idea how to speak English. I will tell you the story. For those of you that don't, don't know it. I was in a cab with the manager. I, can, I, mean, I can't tell you who that is because that would compromise him. I was in a cab with someone in the US, actually. And I was like, oh, dude, you know, I was thinking about it. I really want to build my own team. And we we're talking about it. And I'm like, bro, that was like five years ago, by the way, a little bit more even. Bro, look at this. I'm a branding genius. Imagine every fan wearing a t-shirt that says, we are all gamers too. And I said to myself and to the guy I was with, isn't that genius move? I don't think this is available. So I went to name.com, which is the place you go to check, to check website domains. And uh, like, I was like, gamers2.com. Holy shit. This is not taken. Are people stupid? Turns out, I mean, I bought the domain for I don't even know how many years, okay? That was a bad choice. I bought the .com. I bought the .net. I think I fucking bought .it, dot. OG dot GG. I went bankrupt, people, buying all the domains. God damn it. Fucking out of my mind. So at some point in my career, when I learned how to speak, when I learned how to speak English, I was like, man, this shit, this this name sucks. I have two options. Either I close the company down and burn it, you know? This is burn the whole offices and everything. Hell raining upon gamers too. Or I rebranded. And so we were thinking about this rebranding. We probably had like a thousand iterations of the logo. And we came across a really interesting fact, which is that with the G and the two, you can do a beautiful face or mask, I guess, right? And we were looking at pot possible masks. We were looking at Spartan masks. We were looking at different kinds of masks, right? And different kinds of warriors. And when we went, I mean, when, when we looked into the samurai history, the Japanese, the old Japanese samurai history, we saw a lot of things we felt really in sync with. First of all, resilience, you know, like we are very, we are resilient motherfuckers. Those guys, listen, those armors they had, they were, they were strong, okay? But those motherfuckers were tough. Like they were really tough, you know, with big ass. I don't know if you played For Honor. I, I installed it. I haven't played it, but I guess I have to play at some point. But for honor, you you have this sum. You, you you've seen it. It's just a big, it's a big motherfucker, you know, like a really outstandingly big guy, and like really honorable, um, and a, a number of adjectives, you know, that were pretty much defining who uh, we we are and who we want to be, right? Um, so we went on with it. However, as you can see, we're also, um, you know, very weedy. I guess weedy is, the, is weedy the right word? Um, weedy, street smart, like we like banter and like we, you know what I mean? Like we are relatable to you guys. We're not just a fucking old ass Japanese guy, right? That is a tough guy. No, no, we're, we're not just that. We are you, Mateusz Sigulski from Katowice, Poland. We are you, uh, Yoni Bravo from uh, Wisconsin. We are you, John Wick from London. Okay. And 
we, we like banter. We like to have some fun, you know, in social media and so on. And that's not what samurais do, precisely. Samurai, I, I said samurais. Content team will kill me. It's samurai, by the way, even in, like, it's samurai for one and samurai for two. Um, so, you know, we, we, we needed to refresh what, is, what, what we are as a samurai. We are a new age samurai. You know, we like to banter. We like to take shots on people. We like to compete and we enjoy it, you know? So that's where the samurai is coming from. That's where the samurai is coming from. And by the way, Lothar just plays an amazing samurai. That body, the, I mean, that chest, man, that chest. I, production, do you know if Lothar does steroids? He does steroids. Very good. <laughs> Let's go to the next. I hope I answer your question, bro. I hope I answer your question. Um, next question. How come? <laughs> I know who asked this question. I know exactly who asked this question. This is the good thing. I always read social media, by the way. At Carlos R in Twitter. Or at G2 Esports. Also follow us. But at Carlos R in Twitter. If you mention me, I will read it. You bet your ass I'll read it. And there is this guy that always... It must be every second day. <laughs> He's mentioning me. When are you picking up a Dota team? Listen, you are a relentless motherfucker. I'm pretty sure you're the same guy that asked this question, by the way. I have like zero doubts on my mind. You're the same guy that asked this question. Let me, let me shed some light. What I don't like about Dota is that it's a one-trick pony when it comes down to lineups. Uh, everything revolves around the international. And that's not a healthy uh, business landscape to be in, you know? Um, I'm a competitor first, but I must have a company that sustains itself. Otherwise, I can't be a competitor because I'll be out of business. You know what I mean? Dota does not allow teams to capitalize on whatever... Oh, sorry. That was a half... That was a semi-burp. And then I hit my nose on the microphone. You bear with me, it's my fifth podcast. Hang in there. Anyway, Dota is a really, it's, it's extremely challenging for that reason, man. Every year, there's just roster shuffles. Everybody's speaking with everybody once they're out of the international. If you don't qualify for the international, you're fucked. Like your lineup is gone, you know? It's just such a hostile environment to grow with something beautiful. Um, it's just not in sync with what I believe in. Uh, now things are getting better. There are a lot of tournaments happening in between the international. So as we see that the landscape gets better on, you know, in, in non the international event events, then uh, we'll probably end up picking up a team most likely. Uh, for the moment, however, League of Legends is our number one. Um, uh, how's you call it? focus alongside Counter Strike and Rocket League, and uh, which pretty much is they're they're you know they're taking most of our time and resources. That's the truth. Uh, we also have Super Smash Bros. We have Paladins. We have a sim racing team that is just great, uh, competing across multiple different titles. We have the Hearthstone team, which is incredible. The good thing of Hearthstone team is that they're so mature that they don't really they're not very resources intensive. You know they they really are extremely mature and professional. They, they really don't need us for much, you know? We are there to support them whenever they need it, but, you know, it's actually really easy going. Um, but yeah, League of Legends super focused right now. The ULCS next year is going to kick ass, and hopefully we're going to be a part of that too. Um, so with that said, actually, I don't have any more questions around. I just want to thank... Uh, I don't even know if we are stopping right now. I have to decide in a, in a minute. But thank you, Logitech, Pace of Card, AOC, Need for Seed, ESP, and Twitch for all your help. Without you guys, none of this would be possible because I don't work for free! God damn it. Anyway. People watching in the chat don't work for free. Actually, no one in G2 works for free. This is something that I promised myself. I promise this to myself. No one will work in G2 for free, or in my companies for that matter. Um, there, there's something about 
there's something about um, paying your employees. <laughs> I'm not with, I'm not with, <laughs> I'm not winking at any uh, production is laughing their ass off. I'm not winking at any brand. Okay. I'm not winking at, at any Spanish brand. Okay. Paying employees is a, is a, is a, is a big part is the foundation of a company's success. And in a way, it gives you leverage because if you're asking everybody to give their 300%, you can't do that. You can't possibly do that unless you're part of their life. And you can't be part of their life unless, you know, this is their only source of income or one of their biggest sources of income. That's the truth. And you won't get great, great people for free. Keep that in mind. It's impossible to get great people for free. I guess in every beginning you can uh, you can scrap here and there uh, with the resources you have. Um, I've worked for free in this company for as long as I can remember. Um, but once the company is in a, is, is in a good place, you know, uh, you must put yourself in a position where you can also sustain yourself and allow people around you to grow families with you. You know, you know, we're in a point right now where I know that five years from now there will be you know, colleagues of mine in this, from this company that have children or are married. And I know that G2 will still be a part of their lives, you know? And th that's one of the things that make me very, very happy. Incredibly happy, actually. By the way, if you guys want to apply for G2 Esports, we're not looking, actually, we are looking for a content, uh, production, we're still looking for a content manager, aren't we? We're looking for a content manager. If you think you kick ass and you want to be surrounded by the best industry people, <laughs> Simultaneously, you want to be surrounded by someone like me who takes no steroids but is capable of growing such a biceps. Jobs at g2esports.com. Come and apply. I'll be reading your application myself. All right. I like reading applications, I like giving the people the time they give us back. All right. Um, this was a fantastic. Fantastic day with you guys. I hope whether you're watching live online on twitch.tv slash g2esports or whether you are listening to it in Spotify or in iTunes or in SoundCloud or watching on YouTube, I thank you very much. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason I'm here. And while we may seem slightly witty and a little bit of I can't every now and then, you know. We are eternally grateful for what you do to us. And we are here to entertain you for decades to come. This is Carlos Ozalor, Carlos R on Twitter. And I love you very much and hope to see you on the next episode, which who is it gonna be with production? We don't know yet, right? It doesn't matter. We're gonna get you someone really fucking cool. I'll message Obama, I'll message Barack Obama and see if he can come. Um, I love you. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. With that said, you know, this show exists because of you guys. We want to teach you about esports, we want to entertain you, and for that reason, please provide us with which topics do you think we should be speaking about, which people do you want us to invite. And um, yeah, with that said, please head over to g2esports.com slash shop. Uh, we do our best efforts to create the best possible merchandise for you guys. So please check it out, uh, buy anything you like, and see you on the next podcast, see you on the next episode.